Good afternoon, my friends. This is Paul, and welcome to my fifth annual Best Games of the Year list, where I look back at the Nintendo Switch games that came out in 2021 and rank the 10 best ones that I played. Now, normally I like to stick to which games I reviewed, but because I had computer difficulties in November of 2021, that was too many 20s, I wasn't able to make this list on time for the end of 2021, but that's okay because that means that you can watch this over the other ones that came out on time so that maybe my video can gain more traction. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and say that the number 10 and the number 6 entries I still haven't reviewed yet. So bear with me a little bit on that technicality and let's go forth and look at these amazing games some of which i even captured footage specifically for the occasion so i hope you'll appreciate all that extra effort and let's get into the rankings number 10 is tetris effect connected this is a port of a ps4 game that took the concept of Tetris and made it really flashy and energetic and honestly quite seizure inducing which is why I recorded the multiplayer mode because that's significantly tamer and shouldn't cause anyone in this stream to have epilepsy then again if you're watching video game footage and you have motion sickness what are you even doing in the first place so what I really liked about Tetris Effect was that it felt like I was on a journey through multiple genres even though at the end of the day I was only playing Tetris I felt like I was at a Matt Marr concert on a few occasions, there were moments where I felt like I was at a prom, and I also really liked the different scenic backgrounds and effects, <laughs> no pun intended, that the game threw at me. I also really appreciated that the multiplayer modes, while they were a bit slow to start out, had a lot of different options for players that didn't want to just be stuck to the standard format that games like Tetris 99 offered. You could do classic Tetris rules, a new mode specific to the Switch version where you can put three different players together into one giant Tetris field and make a humongous line clear. And I overall just found that this was a great gem. And I got it for a Christmas gift, so that's another little plus there. At number 9 we have Bowser's Fury. Yes, it's a standalone expansion that was bundled with Super Mario 3D World. How I wish Nintendo sold this separately. I never thought I'd see the day when I'd be wishing that, but I really don't like Super Mario 3D World, so I'm amazed that an expansion of that game would end up being so amazing. No, I definitely have my problems with this game. I think a lot of the mission structures recycled, and I also think that the game could have done better to make the different challenge areas feel unique, but I still had so much of a blast playing this that I 100%ed it, which I very rarely do when I play video games. Plessy is so much fun to ride around the open ocean. There's actually camera controls, and it just feels like an evolution of the open world design that Super Mario Odyssey was trying to be. I also really liked how Bowser actually felt like a threat. His design was much more menacing and felt closer to how scary he was in the final battle of Super Mario 64. And even if the battles were short, they still showcased a great sense of scale, as Bowser is supposed to be so much bigger than Mario, and he makes the entire battlefield turn into this thundering wasteland, and it just has such a good sense of atmosphere. So overall, I think Bowser's Fury is a great stepping stone for the future of 3D Mario. Yes, I know that line is overused, but did you really think that Nintendo would just stop at an expansion of 3D World and call it a day? No. This is clearly a testing ground for a bigger and better Mario game. And if Plessy returns for that one as well, I'm going to be having so much fun skipping along the, the sea to that awesome music. At number 8, we have Persona 5 Strikers. At first glance, this might seem like yet another warrior-style game like Hyrule Warriors and Fire Emblem Warriors, where you take characters from an established franchise and put them into arenas where it's one of them against hundreds of enemies. Although, from what I've heard, this was actually the original vision of Persona 5 finally realized. Unfortunately, this is a sequel to Persona 5, so there's a lot of spoilers in there, and we still don't have Persona 5 on a Nintendo system, so that rubs salt in the wound even more. Nevertheless, this was still a very fun action game 
that felt different enough that it utilized the persona systems in ways that didn't confuse me too much. It also encouraged a lot of exploration and experimentation, which is definitely something that the other Warriors games cannot say. It was fully voiced, almost too much, considering that you can't turn the voice acting off mid-battle. If you have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate save data, you can get the original version of Last Surprise playing during a lot of the battles. And overall, it just had a pretty great story. It did a good job of conveying the idea that humans could potentially develop feelings as complicated or machines can develop as complicated of feelings as humans can. Overall, I really liked the camaraderie of the characters, and I liked how they went on this big road trip, and it felt like one of the road trips of my childhood, just without the annoying bits. And if there were more games like that, I would be very, very happy indeed. But even if it didn't have the road trip elements, the fun beat-em-up gameplay and the flashy combos were more than enough for me. At number 7, we have Deltarune Chapter 2. Most people probably aren't going to say that this is a game, that it's actually just an expansion to Deltarune. I consider it a game because Toby Fox does such a good job of making the Deltarune chapters feel like they're their own complete experiences, despite them only being fragments of a larger game. Chapter 2 wasn't as mind-blowing as Chapter 1 was, but it was a great step up in terms of the mechanics. I also really loved how every now and then the game would even switch genres on you and let you play a Punch-Out minigame, which was hilarious because I loved Punch-Out on the Wii, and I was actually able to apply my skills from that game into this. The game still has hilarious writing, and it does a good job of standing alone for the most part, while at the same time providing a good teaser as to what to expect from chapters 3 and beyond. I really liked the camaraderie of the characters, I liked the combat system, it felt like it was so much more fleshed out than the previous game, the music was phenomenal, and even if it didn't feel as revolutionary as chapter 1 did, it still felt like Toby was getting us really excited for some of the amazing ideas he has coming up. And not only that, but it has a cool dance number, and it seems like dance numbers are what I really love in games nowadays. Number 6 is Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair Anniversary Edition. I love all three of the mainline Danganronpa games, but Goodbye Despair is by far my favorite, and I thought it would be redundant if I put all three games on this list. That would also take away from other great games of different series, so I decided just to pop the best Danganronpa game on here. Admittedly, the Switch version doesn't add a whole lot that the original version didn't already have. It basically just adds the gallery, and that's it. But, this is the first time we Nintendo owners have been able to play Danganronpa, and I am so happy because I used to only be able to watch this on a stream. Now, for those of you that weren't able to watch it on a stream, Goodbye Despair is a continuation of Trigger Happy Havoc with a mostly new set of characters, a new tropical island setting, and improved gameplay mechanics, such as a more streamlined way of earning mono coins, better minigames in the courtroom, Generally speaking, the characters seem to be a lot more likable, and I just really love the different settings that the characters get into. The entire game took place in a school in the previous Danganronpa game, but the tropical island motif adds for some much more unique scenarios that all culminate together in a mind-blowing moment. Not everyone is going to like the Danganronpa games, some people might find them a little bit too M-rated for their likings, but if you have a strong stomach, and if you thoroughly enjoyed Trigger Happy Havoc, then you're going to be even more mind-blown when you get to the second entry. Except maybe Chapter 3. That one just stinks. Number 5 is There Is No Game Wrong Dimension. My gosh, this game is so meta, but that's one of the main reasons why I like it. The premise is that you're trying to play a game, but the game itself doesn't want you to play it, so it tries everything in its power to try to make you shut it down, even forcing intentional glitches and loading screens that are overly long on purpose to make you try to rage quit. And that's only the start of the story. Eventually it gets into this long journey going through various different genres of gaming and offering a commentary on a lot of the things that we either take for granted or hate in modern gaming. 
And even though the mouse cursor is a little bit slow, just about everything else was done to just about perfection. The, the game is nearly fully voiced. For once, I'm actually okay with that because that that is actually used for one of the jokes. And the voice acting that is on display is superb. Nearly every other line, my cheeks were hurting from laughing. And I loved how many times the game itself would be part of a puzzle or the humor. And, as should be a surprise to no one, there's a musical number near the end of the game that is mind-blowing in how the lyrics incorporate themselves. I don't, I don't want to say any more. I don't want to say any more. That might be a spoiler. So, if you know what the song is, don't look it up until you've actually played this game, because if you experience it in context and figure out what you're supposed to be doing, then you'll officially realize, dang, dang, I can't believe I was hoodwinked by such a simple concept. So this is a very reasonably priced game, and you should definitely support the creator. As the game itself says, he has to feed his 12 kids, so help him out, will ya? Number four is Mario Party Superstars. I was such a huge fan of the three Mario Party games on the Nintendo 64. I dabbled a little bit in the later games, but it was the N64 games that really had the nostalgia factor for me. And I am so happy that this newest entry didn't really try to change a whole lot besides the graphics and the overall controls. And that's precisely why I love it so much, is that it's more a remake than a new game. It feels like it has everything that's both great and not great about the old games, and yet at the same time, any other game would get flack for that. But Mario Party is one of those games where you enjoy being annoyed. All the random luck events, and when the game will have pity on someone in last place, and all of your carefully planned planning just goes out the window. It's infuriating, but it's also fantastic at the same time. And, unlike most Nintendo-published games, Superstars actually has good online multiplayer. I encountered maybe twice that the game stuttered, and it wasn't even that bad at that. Only one of the minigames did it actually ruin my timing for. Overall, I felt like the minigame selection was mostly satisfactory, save for the control stick rotating ones from Mario Party 1. The graphics were amazing, the board selection was really well balanced, and I had such a blast playing this with my friends. I definitely hope that the next Mario Party game will do a nice balance of keeping the traditional style that this game preserved, while at the same time also being a new Mario Party game. Or we could just stop here. I'm totally okay with that, too. Either way, Superstars proved to be, quite possibly, the best multiplayer experience I've had all year. And considering how mixed my opinions were of Super Mario Party, that is high praise that in only three short years, Nintendo can bounce way back. Number three is The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. I had such a hard time deciding between this and Neo The World Ends With You because they both came out on the same day, so it's possible that my opinions of the two games may intertwine over the years. Maybe in 2022 I'll look back on this list and say I should have put Neo at number three and Great Ace Attorney at number one. But that just goes to show you how great all of these games are, that they can both come out on the same day. Great Ace Attorney Chronicles is a collection of two 3DS games that originally came out in Japan that starred Phoenix Wright's ancestor. And overall, it's an Ace Attorney game that actually takes itself seriously, more often than not. It actually has quite a lot of references to ancient Britain that, from what I've heard, are actually very accurate to the time period. At times, this makes it somewhat hard to understand the characters, if, as you have to get used to certain Japanese and old British sayings that you might not understand. But it's still a fantastic Ace Attorney game that constantly puts you into new and exciting scenarios, and they actually made the investigation sequences fun by adding Herlock Sholmes into the mix, so that you could really test your deduction skills and even have a fantastic dance number. <laughs> yes. I'm a sucker for those kinds of things. And the game just never stops putting you into situations that you would think the Ace Attorney game had run out of ideas, but nope, they have another cool moment just waiting for you. And 
if you're the type that thinks that you're terrible at courtroom games, it even has a story mode option so that you can just put the game on autopilot. And if you don't want to put the entire game on autopilot, you can take it on and off as much as you want, and you can even slow it down so that it'll show you where the contradiction is in a statement, but then you might want to figure out what piece of evidence it is. And it's just overall a great package. And I haven't even touched on the extras, but I guess I gotta save something for my actual review, huh? Number two is Neo The World Ends With You, the long, long, long awaited sequel to a DS masterpiece. It seriously felt for a while that this game wasn't gonna come at all because of exactly how long it was taking, but it was well worth the wait. The game's combat has been thoroughly overhauled so that you can use traditional controls on the Switch while still feeling like it's an experimental control style, because each party member is mapped to a different button, and since you can have up to six party members, that leads for a lot of battlefield chaos. Even looking besides that, it still has just about all of the great moments from the original World Ends With You, except Tin Pan Slammer, but I wasn't a huge fan of that minigame anyway. But yet it refines everything in such a way that you can clearly tell that they used all those missing years to really refine the series. It has wonderful voice acting, at least I think so. The, the internet doesn't seem to agree with me. Uh, the game doesn't have random battles. Instead, you summon the enemies to you when you want to. In fact, you can't even see the enemies unless you deliberately choose to see them. You can go to the store and buy clothing and food to affect your stats, and the story is just, like, it's so mind-blowing, I don't even know how to describe it to you guys, and I'll probably have to play through it again. But I recently figured out, shortly before recording this, that you can actually review the chat logs of each individual chapter. So if I don't feel like replaying some of the more frustrating elements of the game, I can just go back and relive the experience in text form. So I highly recommend playing the original World Ends With You before you jump into this, as there's going to be a lot of moments near the end of the game that only make sense if you know what they were being built up to. But man, my heart felt so good seeing so many things resolved, and I'm not normally the type of person to use that kind of language. So I really hope that this can get you into such a niche and experimental series from a company like Square Enix who normally hates that kind of stuff. And at number one, we have the game that no one was expecting to be this high up, Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. Some of you might be thinking that it's just a simple visual novel that hardly has any gameplay to it, and thus it would be too boring. But Doki Doki Literature Club uses its flaws as a way to make it good, if that makes any sense. I really don't want to spoil the twist if you haven't played it. But this game is jump scares done right, even if they ended up being more funny than actually scary to me. It still proved to be such an amazing experience that I went and replayed it over and over and over again, and I got my best friend into it, and I got one of my friends who's not even a gamer to be interested in it, and there's also a lot of really cool bonus stuff that the Plus version features. I have my friend Todoroki, who's going to show up in a minute to give you a glimpse of some of the stuff that comes with the physical version of the game, but even if you get it digitally like I did, you still get some extra side stories and pictures, and the side stories give you additional insight into what the girls were like before the Literature Club was founded. And even though there's no gameplay to these sections, I really liked the additional music that was composed for the occasion, and I was also enraptured by the, by the life stories that these girls had. They felt like they were more fleshed out characters, instead of just the one-dimensional tropes that they were intentionally designed to be in the main story. Not only that, but even when I'm stressed nowadays, I often will take the advice of the girls in these side stories, and they've actually been able to help me out. I'm pretty sure no one in their right mind would put Doki Doki Literature Club this high up. They would probably say that I'm only in it for the girls, but I'm actually, I actually hate dating simulators, but yet the fact that I love this kind of game shows that Dan Salvato knew how to really make that genre flip on its head in the best way possible, and I love it so much. So with that, I'll let Todoroki take over from here, 
And until the next time, make sure to keep the faith, stay epic, God bless, and let me know what your favorite games of the year was, or if you want to rant and rave at how high I put Doki Doki. Bye! Hello, everyone! Misaki Todoroki here with my various thoughts on Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. First off, let me start by saying a huge thank you to Paul for letting me make an appearance in this video. He works really hard and delivers amazing content, so please consider liking this video and subscribing to his channel for even more amazing gaming content. Thank you very much! Now, with that said, on with the show! When I first played Doki Doki Literature Club, it was my second year of college. I had heard about the game so many times on the internet and had even received positive reviews from one of my friends. And after hearing such positive reviews, I knew I had to try the game for myself. And I'm happy to say, I wasn't disappointed. The characters, gameplay, and music, tied with the many moments that were suspenseful and jump scares, had me replaying the game repeatedly. Needless to say, I was addicted. After spending hours and hours replaying the game, I was waiting with bated breath for a sequel or origin story that explained how Yuri, Natsuki, and Sayori joined the Literature Club. And then, on June 11th, 2021, my prayers were answered in the form of Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. DDLC Plus is a retelling of the classic story of the original game, with many more interesting things added onto it. And after playing it fully, I can say this. It truly lives up to the hype it's gotten from many positive reviews. The developers somehow managed to take an amazing game I fell in love with and turn it into an even more amazing game than before. First thing I should mention of note is the beautiful new music. Of course I love the original DDLC soundtrack, but the new songs they added to this game are too amazing not to talk about. I literally put those songs on loop when I'm working, or when I have severe writer's block, or even when I'm going on a long car ride. Yes, this new soundtrack has to be my favorite from any game I've ever played. Next is the side stories. I may not know too much about this due to the fact that I'm still having trouble unblocking the remaining runs, but I can assure you, it won't deter me from gushing about it. These side stories give a glimpse into the four girls in a way I never thought possible. My favorite one has to be the Monica and Sayori side story. It was an amazing read, and not only that, it was nice to see the friendship between Sayori and Monica blossom. It reminded me of a similar interaction I had when first trying to make friends in college. Mainly because I see a lot of myself in Sayori and her personality is relatable to me. The last point I wish to add is my absolute favorite moment of the game. More accurately, the moment that made me nearly drop my controller and go, what the heck? Most veteran fans would think I'm talking about the moment Monica guesses your account name, but I'm here to tell you, that's not the case. The moment I'm referring to is when the game crashed and an error message popped up on my PS4. I rebooted the game as usual, and Monica greeted me in the empty classroom by saying, Oh, so the game crashed? I wonder if it was because of a bug or something. Well, regardless, it's fixed now. <laughs> I have to say, after seeing that, I shut off the game for the night. I was so scared. And yet, it also fascinates me that Dan Salvato made it so Monica's AI knew about the game crashing, when something like that never even happened in the original game. And to that I say, kudos. In summary, Doki Doki Literature Club is an amazing game, and I highly recommend it, especially if you play the original. Once again I say, you will not be disappointed. Now on to the final and most amazing part of the video. As anyone who has purchased a physical copy of DDLC Plus knows, it came with a variety of goodies. First off, there are these adorable cardboard figures of the four girls. These figures are in the shape of the chibi forms of the girls that bounce around on the screen when you select the words for the poems and game. While I admit these are a pain in the butt to put together, especially if you're as horrible at assembling things as I am, they're both beautiful and an amazing thing to own if you're a fan of DDLC. Also hidden in this gem of a box are these beautiful and colorful stickers, eight of which are, once again, chibis of the four girls. One in their neutral emotion, and one of their reaction when you pick their favorite word. The rest consist of a pointer of a mouse, a pen, hearts, a sun, a coffee cup, and an adorable pink kitty cat face. Needless to say, I will be putting these on display ASAP. The next two items are the most interesting ones in my opinion. First up, a Literature Club member card. That's right! Along with this game comes a card that, in my opinion, makes you feel like you're part of the game. You fill it out with your name, favorite color, favorite genre, and favorite word. Just looking at this card makes me feel like a member of Monica's Literature Club, and it even inspires me to write a few poems of my own. The next thing is a card that looks like the floppy disk for a computer. On the front side, there's a code to download the full soundtrack for DDLC+. 
which, as I mentioned before, I currently have downloaded onto my laptop and listened to in a constant loop. But the thing that fascinated me the most was on the reverse side. Two words inscribed in the paper part of the disc. Load me. Yet another callback to the game as Monica writes this in one of her many poems. As soon as I saw that reference, I had this huge smile on my face. Two more amazing items added to my DDLC merch collection, and I couldn't be happier. As for the final item, well, let's just say Monica has her own way of saying thank you to the people who purchased the game. The satisfaction of control. The direct cause and effect of pressing pen to paper. The pride in my achievements. The responsibility for my mistakes. I breathe the weight of it all. Problems are just things that need solving. The future is called anxiety. The past is called regret. The present can be shaped by my hands, by my words, by my actions. It controls me, anchors me to my handcrafted reality, imprisons me within my own artisanship. The captive pen makes meaningless stains, wet lines soaked up by the pulp of dead cells. That's why I must learn to relinquish it all. The weight, the responsibility, the pride, the control, the pen in my hand and the one of my heart, so I can fly and chase yours, or learn to be happy watching you fly without me. And there you have it! My thoughts on Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. To those who may be watching this video that haven't played DDLC Plus yet, I highly recommend you do so. You won't be disappointed, I give you my guarantee. Once again, a huge thank you to Paul for letting me be in this video. None of this would have been possible without him and his hard work and willingness to invite me and share my views. Thanks again and much love to you and your channel in the future. And now, my dear viewers, I end it by taking a leaf out of Monica's book and giving you a daily tip of my own. So without further ado, here's Todoroki's motivational tip of the day. No matter what happens, always follow your dreams. You'll never know where they lead you. Also, be sure to always spread love and positivity around. Remember, a few kind words can truly make a person's day in the end. Much love to Paul and everyone watching this video. Never forget how awesome you all truly are. Bye-bye!